Namaste to everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the morning session. So we were talking yesterday about, we rediscussed some of the activities of the self and how um, it looks when we are not awakened to the higher activities. When we are not awakened to the higher activities or the B1 block, this is how it looks. of desire, thought, expectation going on. We may not be aware of them because we're not observing them. We are just flowing with them. So we don't see them as separate. But when we start observing, we are generally able to see some of the gross things within. In fact, if you see, when we start talking about desires in the workshop and we talk about desires, generally we are talking about even though we want to be happy, it is about what, you know, about being. But we generally tend to look at desires in the form of expectations or we confuse the expectation with the desire that anything that we get from outside will make us happy. So whether it be a new phone or a car or something else and something else. So this is what we look at, but it, that is actually an expectation that you're trying to get something from outside. That is the whole focus. So this is one of the first things that we can see within. And then as we keep paying attention within, we are also able to observe the thoughts going on within. And then this desire to be happy, that the feeling associated with that, that feeling then slowly we are able to observe as we keep paying attention because we have to move from the lower to the higher activity in order to observe things. So if we are working at the level of expectation, you can notice that there may have been a time when we were very focused on our likes and dislikes. And you can see many examples in society also. So you tend to do things that um, you like, you tend to avoid things you dislike. So for instance, we may dislike the sensation of cold water on the skin. So we, our thoughts go towards, you know, how to have hot water in the house, how to uh, have um, hot water for the bath. And if the electricity goes one day and the geyser is not working, we may skip the bath because it's uh, very cold water. I don't want to have a bath. So like that, our uh, expectations have to do largely with sensation and sensation that is unguided. So I'm just seeing what is pleasurable to my senses in the body. And I go for that. Or I, you know, that is what I'm expecting. And then that is how my behavior is outside. It is unguided. From inside, there is no guide. I'm just looking outward and whatever appeals to my five senses, I go towards that. As we start, you know, using our thought process more, comparing, analyzing, and so on. Now also, a large part of our thinking is based on how to get this, you know, 
um, this sensation, it is still unguided. But now my thought process is on how to make it better and better. For instance, you know, I may have, like I, it is summertime and I dislike the hot sensation on the skin. So I think of cooler and then I think of something more and something more. I have, I think of an AC and we think of more sophisticated um, instruments and more sophisticated um, um, equipment and things like that for that same end, the unguided sensation. Similarly, we think of profit. If I think that I want to make more money, then my whole thought process is about how to maximize that profit. See, I don't have any holistic picture. I am only seeing what is there outside through the sensation and I'm seeing things through my preconditionings. So maximization of profit, regardless of what is happening anywhere else, that might be the focus. When we say health, the focus is largely the body. So how to keep my body healthy, how to maximize that I may be very obsessed with the health of the body. I may go do many, many tests and um, try to ensure, you know, that um, I may go for, you know, all these kind of tests, whole body scan and this and that, and do all the testing every year and be very particular that things have to be done for the body, for my body. But I don't have any view of what to do with that healthy body. So even if I'm working for the health of the body or I'm having thoughts of keeping the body healthy, my ultimate aim is still that, to go for unguided sensation, to be able to enjoy the pleasures through the body, to be able to use the body to maximize my gain and so on. It is unguided. When it comes to the desire, that image that we form within, when it is unguided, we are looking outside largely. So our desires are based on the outside, our preconditionings, our sensation, and a small percentage also through our natural acceptance, but a very small percentage, largely. And you can observe that within yourself. So once we start having access or becoming aware of the B1 block, or once we you know, are able to see some of these higher activities within us or look from a higher viewpoint, then we are able to see you know, that contemplation activity is about seeing our relationship with other human beings, not just the immediate family or the body related, um, what we call blood relatives, not just those, but to be able to, to see my relationship with other human beings also. And I see what is my role in all the relationships. I may not have all the view about my relationship with all units yet, but at least I will be able to see my relationship with other human beings and my role, my participation in that relationship. That's when my desire, my feeling becomes ensured. The first awareness can be that I observe I contemplate on the relationship and this will happen by continuous or you know back and forth, back and forth, referring to the natural acceptance. Because even though this B1 block may not have opened to begin with, that natural acceptance, that glimpse is always there. 
so when i keep referring to the natural acceptance my feeling becomes somewhat i can see that you know um as i contemplate on whatever information i get and as i refer to my natural acceptance i am able to see this relationship better and better to begin with the first thing at some moment i am able to have the right feeling and then i am able to observe that i feel very comfortable within when i have this feeling that is kind of the breakthrough point that is the point where i realize that this is what i actually wanted it was not the car or the house or the other person listening to me this is what i was really looking for to be happy to be calm to be comfortable within and with that i start working to having this feeling more and more often because i i want to continue to be in this state because i have this feeling so when i do that this becomes my motivating factor now nobody else has to remind me i start referring to my natural acceptance more frequently and i start moving towards observing my feeling is it making me comfortable or not is it the right feeling or not and observing that i do become very uncomfortable when i don't have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable with that observation as it i keep being motivated ultimately till i have the full picture i may not be able to ensure this feeling within me all the time but there will be more and more moments when i can have that feeling so contemplation once that gets activated i see my relationship with others and i participate in the relationship in that larger order as i keep working on this i can move up to the activity of understanding where i see the harmony in nature that it is already there in harmony it's not just my harmony within myself not just my harmony with the body but now i start seeing every unit in this existence is in harmony so this is the activity of understanding when i have the understanding then i have that determination it's not just about one point or one idea this determination of being in harmony with all the other units in nature so i may be able to see things like you know earlier i may have enjoyed you know how when there is a celebration and there is a say a marriage or a you know big restaurant or something how they put these led lights on trees and all of that earlier i may have enjoyed that oh it looks so beautiful it looks so pretty now i may start thinking about you know how the tree how it might be for the tree because at night you know how the sun when the sun goes down the leaves of the trees close it is sleeping time for the tree also and how this cool night which would have been comfortable perhaps for the tree comfortable in the sense that would have been appropriate not really comfortable would have been appropriate for the tree now how this light around it might be causing too much heat too much light interfering with that normal process of um the closing of the leaves and so on so i am able to relate to other units even in nature i am able to see the harmony and how we might be disrupting the harmony so then i start working towards being in harmony myself with nature so i un- i understand that and my determination is towards all these units 
and how to be in harmony with all the units. Ultimately, when I'm able to open up the realization, I will be able to, or when I can have access to the realization of this coexistence that is already there, you know, all the units are in coexistence. They are all submerged in space. And this space is the one that is on the basis of which we all have this relationship. Now I will be able to see that full picture. And with that, the authentication. Authentication just means that, you know, you will now, it will be like all my lower activities will come in line with this. And I'll be able to ensure my feelings and with that have my thoughts, my expectations in line with this realization, in line with this understanding. And my work and behavior also, it will reflect in that. So I will have definite behavior. So I will have, now if we go from top to bottom, the realization will, you know, um, make me aware of the coexistence. The understanding makes me aware of the harmony. The contemplation makes me aware of relationships. And with this, now my desires fall in line with that. My imaging becomes in line with that. My feeling becomes in line with that. And this feeling now drives my thoughts. So in my thoughts now, it is not about unguided senses. Now my senses are guided by this coexistence, the harmony, justice in relationships. And even when I look at the health of the body, now I'm not overly obsessed with the body. I see its role. I understand that I am responsible for the body, I take responsibility for the body. And I also have that higher purpose in mind that for each and every individual, the body is playing a certain role just to help the self to achieve its purpose. That purpose is very clear. And I also see my participation in helping others to reach that purpose. Now, I am not looking at profit maximization. I am looking at profit, which is guided by all these higher activities. So, you know, having that feeling of prosperity and sharing whatever I have with others. And ultimately for the sensation part also, you can see now the coexistence, the harmony, the justice in relationships, that is guiding the sensation. So you become more responsible in your actions because now your whole thought process is guided by these higher activities. Uh, to understand the whole process of this model given, uh, the relationship between realization, understanding and contemplation how it moves to authentication and determination, I want to understand that. See, don't worry about the words. Is it coming in our living or not? Yes. That sir. our focus should be on that. Mm -hmm. Because the process will happen as we start observing. So I think if we go directly to the exercises, we can start working on that process. Start trying to observe within us. Because ultimately what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand through the words. That will not happen. The authentication, how, what is that? Happens All your that? lower activities will be in line with that realization. That realization of coexistence, that realization of our submergence in space and how we are all interlinked, why there is this or how there is this harmony in all the units 
and how the um, you know the whole organization is how everything is interlinked with one another we are not separate all that you'll be able to see it so on that basis now all your lower activities will be in line with that nobody will have to tell you that you should have the right feeling towards this one that one you will have it automatically you will you'll be able to see it directly ultimately when you realize this whole coexistence is there you are able to see all your relatedness with each and every other unit all your thoughts all your desires all your expectations come in line with that and with that you do your work outside so everything is based on that but till you see it whatever so these exercises exercise 1 and 2 exercise 1 is observing the self by the self exercise 2 is observing the body by the self so all of us we are in this process of trying to develop ourselves that transformation that we are looking for within ourselves we are trying to do that therefore we are doing these exercises so it should be very clear why we are doing the exercises what is the significance so we have to develop this understanding improve our competence try to directly see what is being said and whatever accumulated feeling and thought we have from before try to purify that that accumulated feeling and thought is the sanskar we have all heard in the um workshop also about all that we have gathered that feeling and thought that is associated with whatever we have gathered from outside that may or may not be in line with the natural acceptance so purification just means we purification just means that we are able to see what is naturally acceptable and keep what is naturally acceptable also we are able to see what is not naturally acceptable and is making me uncomfortable so i drop it or it gets dropped on its own when i see that i this is not what i want isn't it so that purification process has to happen for that purification process to happen to be able to see my that accumulated feeling and thought which is driving my feeling at this moment first and foremost i have to see my thought i have to see my feeling then i will be able to see that accumulated thing that is driving that sanskar which is a little more subtle even than the feeling so now i have to start trying to directly observe these so why are we doing this we all want to live with fulfillment we all want to live with happiness so for living with this continuous fulfillment with this happiness in continuity for that we are doing these exercises so in the workshop we talk about this right that what is our basic human aspiration even in this prelude last month we talked about this so our basic human desire our basic aspiration is for happiness isn't it now in order to ensure this continuity of happiness we talked about this at length that three things have to happen we need to have right understanding in the self right understanding in the self means that completeness of right understanding that means to reach that activity of realization to be able to become aware of the activity of realization and on the basis of that having the right feeling the right thought within the self the second thing and the third thing is we need to have the competence for living that way in the world outside 
So those three things are essential in that order. So we work towards it. We may be able to see it from down up, but ultimately we have to get to that activity of realization. Nothing less will do because we won't have the full picture otherwise. So right understanding in the self, right feeling and thought in the self on the basis of that understanding and the competence for living with that in the world outside with that definiteness in behavior. So when we, when we do these exercises or why we are doing this exercise is to develop the right understanding of the existential reality of the whole reality, the way it is, not whatever I have assumed it to be, but what it truly is. So to be able to see the self as it is, to be able to see the body, what that is, to be able to see the family, my part in the family, to be able to see all of society, to see that we are all a part of society and we all make that society, to understand you know, my role in this society, to be able to understand nature, the harmony that is already there, this whole existence, how things are working in a very definite manner, how everything is self-organized, how everything is energized, how everything is seeing or recognizing its relationship with every other unit and fulfilling that relationship. All of that, all of this understanding I can have within myself by directly observing. So for that, we are doing this. And when we say the right feeling and thought, the right feeling means, we've already just now discussed it, the feeling of relationship with the activity of contemplation being active, the feeling and thought of harmony with understanding, the feeling and thought of coexistence, with realization. So all of that, we'll be able to have that feeling in line with that, once we have that right understanding within us. And when it comes to competence for right living, that competence also, what we do outside, before that, all this Thought process goes on inside, isn't it? Before we can actually do the, what we want to do outside. So now all our feelings, our thoughts, already we said the feelings will be in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence. And the thoughts also will be now about living in relationship, harmony and coexistence with the world outside. So when it comes to my behavior with other human beings, I will see not only what gives me happiness, but also what gives happiness to the other. I'll be able to see that my happiness is linked to the happiness of the other also. And I will see my role in that. I will see how I can help the other with the right feeling at all times. Similarly, when it comes to work with the rest of nature, I will not only look at my profit, my prosperity, but I will now look at prosperity in nature also. I will look at this whole harmony that is there and how I can be a part of it or how I can aid it, how I can um, at least not disrupt it. In fact, I will start looking at ways of um, uh, sort of whatever mistakes human beings may have committed in the past regarding disharmony, creating disharmony in the nature. I will start working towards trying to move it in the right direction and so on. I will look at my participation. 
I will try to see what I can do for the rest of all of this nature, all of the families, the society, other human beings, to ensure happiness and prosperity for one and all. Of course, I cannot make the other person happy, but my, I can certainly make effort to do that. I cannot make the other person understand, but I will make effort to help the other understand, which is a little bit different from make the other try to see that what I'm saying is right. There I'm trying to change the other person because I think they should agree to, with me. And if they don't agree with me, I get unhappy. There I'm still trying to get the right feeling from the other. But when I see my role, then I also accept that everybody has a different level of competence. And based on their competence, they will be able to see things. But I will make my effort without becoming unhappy. So we will work on the self first. Once we can see the self correctly, then we can live in harmony with the world outside. So our main focus will be on making sure that we have the right understanding of the reality the way it is. All of this understanding has to be in the self. So we have to observe this within. Like we said, the activities of realization, understanding and contemplation, they are there within us. We need to just activate them. So we need to be able to see this within ourselves. And on the basis of this, have the feeling and thought of relationship, harmony and coexistence in the self. And the expression of that will be outside. So to live with fulfillment, we have to understand. If we want to understand, we have to see, to observe within. And to observe within, we have to pay attention. We have to be mindful. We have to see what is happening inside. Be aware of that. So in these exercises, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be paying attention to try and see within, to try and understand. And ultimately, once we understand some things, we can see that it translates to our living. Living with fulfillment, not just my fulfillment, fulfillment of the other also. Not just my happiness, happiness of the other. Not just my prosperity, prosperity of the nature also. And so on. If it is not coming in our living, then we have not really fully understood, isn't it? We tend to make mistakes in living when we don't understand that reality as a whole. So if I don't understand relationship, of course I will make mistakes in my living in relationship. I may understand relationship to be with my blood relatives. So when I do that, I may think that it is okay to have a feeling of relationship for the blood relatives, but I don't need to have any kind of feeling of relationship for other human beings because I don't see my relationship with that, with the other person. So I need to understand the relationship, what it is. And like we just discussed, if I don't see that reality, it is, these are just words. So I keep slipping back to what I have assumed to be true. What is my sanskar from before? I may, be, I may have assumed that my relationship is only with these people and not with those people. So I behave a certain way. I have a certain feeling with these people and I have a different feeling with the others. And even with these immediate relatives within my immediate family also, I may not have the competence to have that right feeling. So I have not understood things. Otherwise, that feeling would have been ensured. Isn't it? So when we are paying attention, 
there are two parts. One is the object of attention, what to pay attention to. And the other is the process of paying attention, how to go about it. So anyway, we are paying attention to something or the other all the time. But what to pay attention to, that is important. If I am not clear about what to pay attention to, I pay attention to many things. And I'm not clear of why I'm paying attention to them either. The other thing is how to go about this paying attention. While we are putting across the things, okay, the words which we use in general are something different. Whereas when we talk about ourselves, there's something different. Uh, the words like uh, that's what we are saying now. All this time yeah. we were talking about that. Yeah. That the word is not so important as seeing that reality. So first of all, object of attention. What we need to. So what do we have to understand? If we see, you no, know, we want to pay attention to something. We are already paying attention to something or the other. So we need to pay attention to what we have to understand. So what is to be understood? We have to understand everything that we are living with. So at the level of myself, who am I? I can see that through the activities within myself. I have to see those. I have to understand the body. I have to understand the family. I have to understand the society. And I have to understand the nature and ultimately this whole existence. So we saw all this that, or at least we got the information that the existence is in the form of coexistence. It is in the form of units that are submerged in space. These units are of two types. There are the material units and there are the consciousness units. So now we have to try to understand the material units the consciousness units, and we have to understand space, isn't it? Ultimately, this is what we have to understand so that we can, it will help us to understand all the other units that are there. If we try to see from, you know, if we start from within ourselves, we can see that the self is a unit of consciousness. So I have to understand myself. We also try to understand the body. So the body is a material unit. It helps me understand other material units. And ultimately, I also have to understand the space. I have to understand the coexistence that is there of all the units in space. I have to understand this or see this submergence of all the units in space, how we are related to one another, how things are working in a self-organized manner. All this I'll be able to see when I can see space. Understand as in see, see in, not in the sense of seeing through the eyes, through the gross eyes, but understanding it, paying attention to it. So we'll do it by the following exercises. Exercise one is to understand the consciousness, the self in a lot of detail. Exercise two is to understand the body, the material unit in detail. And ultimately, we will briefly go into exercise three also, which is for understanding the coexistence, the space. But before that, we have to develop a lot more competence to be able to work with exercise one and two, to be able to understand the self, to be able to understand the body, and how the two are linked, and how it can impact my living in the outside world. 
So this is what we'll be talking about. So um, tomorrow we'll go into uh, further detail in this. Today we can reflect on this and we can try to see for ourselves what is the object of our attention. At least, um, you know, if we can notice this or if we can maybe put a reminder on our phone and check on it every one to two hours, what is my object of attention? If we can do that for today and we'll share our observations tomorrow, reflect on this and we'll go forward tomorrow.